I was inches away from buying that EOS R. Just, it was on sale, even in Canada. Even in Canada, it was less than $30,000. And I almost jumped into that pool of life, but I did not. It is nice, I have a towel to protect me. Not only was it a bad joke, but it was, it was lazy, you know, obvious and predictable. So the Canon EOS R goes on sale on Boxing Week and a bunch of just buyers remorsing dweebs fell for it. And they're just like, oh, I got it so cheap. Oh, I didn't need it. Oh, I don't need anything. The happiness comes from in here. Oh, but oh, why? So let me tell you why I didn't fall for the EOS R and how you can protect yourself from future sales and falling into the trap. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. You know, the funny thing about my journey, my hunt for the perfect camera, it's been to upgrade from this, the Panasonic G85, trying to find a better camera for YouTube. It almost seemed impossible, but then Marcus Pix ruined all of our lives by giving us the GH5S. It's perfect. It even does that. It even autofocuses 10 bit files, slow motion of the yin yang, 240 frames per second. Are you even knowing what that's like? You don't? So now I'm kind of on this fake journey of, oh, we, we could get a better camera. There's no better camera coming than this. It ain't even coming. We're looking for Nathan's web. The hell does that even mean? I don't know. We're not gonna find it. Freaking spiders everywhere. But still, my heart lusts after a full frame sensor. This is almost APS-C. It's 1.8 times crop. Where most APS-C, the Canon APS-C 1.6, we're barely smaller than that. Take that. And the Canon EOS R crop in 4K, technically speaking. If I were to film in 4K, 1.8 times crop here, 1.8 times crop there. Same camera, less bit depth. The only thing about the Panasonic system is I can't fully ever trust it to autofocus, even though it seems to pretend it's good. Sometimes it's not predictable, although it's very predictable right now. Usually, it's flawless in every way. But there's a couple things I'm looking to upgrade from this eventually. One, the colors. I don't like how my skin is like this yellowish liver disease formula. Like this is straight out of camera. Like Panasonic doesn't see red in the same way I see it. Or do you? It looks similar on the screen to me, but it's, there's like an orange to it. Color science is real. And I'll tell you, I was following, there's this guy, what's his name? Wakaz Quasi, that's how you pronounce that in case he didn't even know it, now he does. He's a color grading expert on Da Vinci and I watched a couple of his videos and he has one, this crash course on coloring with Da Vinci and I watched the whole thing following along with a clip I filmed in the GoPro now I wanna show you a side-by-side -side example of what I had previously color graded versus his version, basically taking his advice and doing all the things he said to do. I'll play those side-by-side -side right now. My version on the left, his on the right. And I'm just like, holy shit, what the hell was I doing? Like I thought mine looked okay, I, I thought it was passable. I couldn't pass a kindergarten exam with that thing. And those are hard by the way. Don't, don't underestimate a kindergarten exam. You forget most of the things you learned. You don't know what the primary colors are. So while I do now possess the skills to make a good looking image such as this, it took so much time. He had me face tracking shit, making masks out of my face and tracking it so it moved around and changing the sky color, but teal and orange and shit. And I can't do that for vlogs. I'm moving all around the screen. You can't follow me. I can't do that. I need something straight out of camera. That's why I fell in love with the Fuji system. Fuji X-T3, I barely had to tweak it. And whenever I did, I made it worse. It looked better out of camera. Don't touch it. It turned a profile for life. So that's what had me thinking. Can an EOS R? Hmm. Interesting. Should we get to the point of the video? Let's do that. Here's the reasons I wouldn't buy the EOS R. One reason, it may seem nitpicking, but that mode dial, it's gone. The flipper 
from photo. Oh, I'm changing all the settings I wanted. Oh, what was it on? Oh, help. Someone send help. I love that in the GH5S, I got the custom modes. Just boom, bam, boom. My C1 is the perfect manual focus setting. C2 is slow motion. C3, I wish I could name them. I forget them all the time. Someone help me. C3 is the autofocus. Flawless, except when I want to do something like that. Yeah, yeah, you see it. Is it face detecting the top of my hair? Is that what's happening? That's the interesting thing for you. How dare you. With the Canon EOS R, it's all digital. It's like you gotta press a button then look on the top thing or the screen. It's like, oh, where, oh, is this a smartphone? I don't know, understand technology. My grandmother, I need her cookies to help me bring me back to the old times. Ain't nobody got time for that. I need my custom mode dials. So they need to switch back and that touch bar, remove it. Who the hell is, I might like it. Just reach back there, tap on that. I wish it. they all had multiple touch bars. Put a couple on the front, dickhead. Just boom, imagine that. Why not? What's on there? Nothing. The lens mount thing, Ooh, like that's important. Keep one lens, asshole. Another problem with Canon, they have low highlight dignity, as I like to call it. The highlights are forced, they're not natural. They just, they're punchy. Whenever I see a Canon video, I see perfectly exposed faces, beautiful skin tones, and then harsh skies. Demons coming out of those skies, looking at you. To be fair, it's a problem with most cameras. I think every camera, except a cinema camera, but still, my highlight standards are unreasonable, but real. real reason I didn't jump into the Canon ecosystem of life is their lens lineup doesn't have anything to lure me in there. There's no, I need a 24 mil f 1.2 now. I demand that now. And you know the cool thing about full frame, the shallow depth of field? I like that you can be further away and still get the blurry background. It's not like super blurred, but like now that I'm back here, that's all pinpoint accurate. That's bullshit. A micro for a third, you can get away with it up here. But then it's like, you better be on point with your skin care products, and I'm not. Someone help. Send help. I'm acceptably good looking here. No, here. How do you do? Honestly, there's not one lens that could get me into that system right now. 35 1.8, I see people filming with it, and it doesn't look right in the background. The bokeh is not pleasing enough. It's jagged. There's rocks in it. There's rocks in the lens. And why'd you add rocks to your lens? You shouldn't have. You did. You could adapt that Sigma 24mm f1.4 to it. It would work. But it's still old technology. I want new. I'm not gonna buy a new mount to adapt to ancient shit. Get in life. I just saw no reason to. Oh, I feel bad for people who bought it. It's like you got suckered into it. It's like, yeah, it's on sale, but you still spent thousands of dollars on a camera that wasn't really complete. And you already had a camera guaranteed that was as good or better than that. And you fell for it. Also the autofocus I've noticed in people's videos, it's kind of jarring. Like even this is smoother now. I don't mind that it takes a little while and comes in. It's like Canon, it's a bit, you notice it in the background. It's like, it's like vacuum suction focusing mode. Vacuum pixels enabled, disable them. I don't know if it's because their lenses focus breathe or something, something changes in the background and it doesn't look right. I don't like it. Also the fact that it only has 720p slow motion, although for a studio camera, admittedly, I never do the slow motion for some reason. Should we do it now? The suspense. It's like, what's he reading? Is it gonna fall? Oh no. That's just phenomenal content right there. Took me a week to write that script. So just wow. I'm also psychologically punishing Canon for releasing what I feel is an unfinished camera just to rush it out to compete with the Nikon Z6. 
in this raw video. Oh, it's only 1080p, oh, sorry. I always said it was gonna be Canon's second full frame mirrorless camera that was gonna be the one to look at. They get the kinks out in the first one, then boom, they got it. They got their feet wet, although that was the RP. But that doesn't count, that backslid back. The next one up, that's gonna be the one. So it just wasn't enough to get me to pull the trigger. I was close, I was tempted. I was like, yeah, it's basically the perfect camera for what I need. It doesn't have 10 bit. And I hate that, it makes me cry. But the screen is nice, flippy, autofocus, jarring, but reliable. It could work. Lenses, I'd have to adapt. I don't wanna spend money on that. I want a new one, so we'll see. Can an EOS R2 with a 24mm f1.2? Maybe, maybe you got yourself a customer, Canon. Then I can avoid your cripple hammers bullshit. I almost bought the camera. It's a good camera. It would have been fine. I'm just nitpicking here. It's a great deal too. I love the price. It should have been that at launch. Oh, that's new. So let me know down below if you fell for it. What did you fall for this Boxing Day season? They get you. They get you. It's like, oh, it's so much cheaper. You gotta understand, these companies lower the price. How much did it cost to make the EOS R? If it went from 2400 Canadian down to 1999, it must have cost $700, if that. There's no way it cost more than that. So they're lowering it, yeah, but it's still super high. And money buys food and rent. So, we're done. Thank you so much for buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. Subscribing for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.